Thank you for introduction. Uh, I talk about statistical generalizing attack on obfuscations over GGH50 multi-year map. This is a joint work with Jung Yi-chan, Won Yi-cho, Ming Yi-han, and Chang Yi-li. The outline, of con outline consists of backgrounds, previous work, and our works, and further works. Okay, I will start the uh, background part. Uh, in this table, the obfuscation is a polynomial time algorithm that transforms the program P into an obfuscated program P, which preserves the functionality and gives the uh, one-bit unintelligible. One-bit un one bit unintelligible is to hide one-bit information that one of two equivalent programs is obfuscated. Hereby, equivalent means both programs have the same functionality and have same size. For such programs, their obfuscated programs are computationally indistinguishable. Although I only provide one bit information, <coughs> it is a very powerful tool since there are many cryptography applications based on existence of obfuscations, such as functional encryptions and witness encryptions and multi-party key exchange. So constructing obfuscation is a challenging problem in cryptography. The goal of this field is to construct an obfuscation for NC1 circuit. Since it can be bootstrap to IO for all circuits when we have a homomorphic encryption with NC1 decryption circuit. There are two approaches to construct an obfuscation. The first approach is called the direct construction. It is based on cryptographic multilinear maps represented by well known three candidates GGH13, CH13, and GGH15. Also, it uses uh, branching programs and arithmetic circuits as an uh, input program. And it is probably secure on the idealized multilinear map. Uh, idealized means multilinear maps only provide the uh, handles of their operations instead of real computation. However, in the real world, uh, it has been suffered from many zeroizing attacks. The other approach is uh, construction via bootstrapping. It is based on the functional encryptions and pseudorandom generators. Recently, sub-exponentially secure doubly, binary map, and weak pseudorandom generators are used to construct an obfuscation. This will be discussed in the next talk. So I'll focus on the first approach, is called, which is uh, direct construction. Uh, I introduce a brief history of obfuscations based on GGH50 multilinear map. The first two candidates called GGH RSW papers was proposed in 2013. It is based on any multilinear maps, so it is natural to consider GGH RSW obfuscation plus based on GGH50 multilinear map. And the first quantum attack was Based, was proposed in few, days, few years later. By solving the princi principal idea problems, they showed the GGH RSW obfuscation based on GGH 50 multilinear web is not secure. In the same years, the implementation of, of implementation of obfuscations based on GGH 15 was proposed, but it was broken by the next paper called CVW 18. A paper CV18 proposed a new classical attack which targets on GGH RSW and HHSS obfuscations. And it also presents a new secure obfuscation which is robust against all known attacks. In the same years, another paper called BGNG18 proposed a provably secure obfuscation based on the some algebraic Borders. I'll talk about it later. <clears throat> so now, only two schemes are standing now. CVW and BGMG obfuscations are secure against all known attacks. Moreover, BGMG obfuscation is probably secure on the GGH15 zeroizing model, which captures and generalizes all known algebraic, zeroiz 
algebraic generalizing attacks on GJT15. So in this situation, we naturally, uh, in this situation, we have a natural two questions. Are they secure? And is the model enough to construction? Our, our work gives a partial answer of these two, works, uh, two questions. In this work, we introduce a new cryptanalysis called the statistical generalizing attack on obfuscations based on GGH15 Martinia Mac. We also apply the statistical attack to CBW and BGM obfuscations. As a result, our attack breaks the CBW obfuscation for current parameters, and we show the algebraic security model is not enough to achieve uh, ideal obfuscations. Indeed, we break indeed. Mm, we break the BGM obfuscation for year the parameters whose security fruit, whose security proof still holds. So our attack is not captured by the algebraic model. Uh, to introduce our attack, we we briefly review the GGH15 Martinian map. GGH15 Martinian map supports the. Uh, additions, multiplications, and zero test operations. All operations are defined on a graph whose vertices are random matrices AI with an edge from AI to AJ. The encoding of GH15 Martinian map has a special structures. If this is an encoding of M with an edge from I to J, then AID is approximately equal to MIJ. And addition and multiplications are the same as matrix operations. And the last operations, it, key op, the key operation of GGH15 Martinian map is a zero test. It is used to determine whether the matrix is zero or not. Indeed, if the double prime is an encoding of M with a, with a special edge from zero to H, then a sub zero, the double prime is approximately to equal to M A sub H due to its construction. So we can determine whether M is or not by calculating a uh, norm of the matrix A zero, the double prime. If M is zero, then the matrix, oh, sorry, the matrix should be smaller. However, if M is not zero, then the norm is not small because a, H, a sub H is a random matrix. So, uh, we now record the definition of branching programs for Boolean functions. A branching program for Boolean functions consists of two H binary matrices and a function G. <coughs> Evaluation at an input x is to multiply these binary matrices in predetermined order. If a Boolean function output is zero, then the result matrix is also zero. Otherwise, if Boolean function output one, then the result matrix is not is non-zero matrix. Is non-zero matrix. Although we introduce a branching program for Boolean functions. Any ancient circuits can be converted into a branching program. So, branching program is used to is used as an input program of obfuscations. So, we are ready to describe how to construct an obfuscations. First, I/O consists of two algorithms called obfuscations and evaluations. Obfuscation has the three steps. First, convert a program into a branching program, and the next step is randomize branching programs while preserving the functionality. The first candidate, GGHRSW, uses a safeguard, and reset candidate, CVW and BGM obfuscations use a chronicle tensor product. Both randomizing techniques are used to prevent any invalid evaluations. The last step of obfuscation is to encode the randomized matrices using GGH15. GGH15, yeah. Evaluation of obfuscation is simple. It is, it is the same as the zero test of GGH15. 
As an example, we introduce uh, simplified BGM obfuscations. Our target program is the set of matrix MI, which always up to zero. So we we'll skip the subscript related to input X. For a matrix MI, we can calculate a randomized matrix SI hat using a chronicle tensor product. And then using a GGH50 multilinear map, we compute, a, we compute D prime I, which is an encoding of SI hat with an edge from I to I plus one. Uh, and then BGMG, BGMG papers add uh, extra Blanc matrix is called PI to prevent all algebraic attacks. Moreover, <clears throat> to hide the extra Blanc matrix PI, they, they multiply two invertible matrices, RI inverse and RI plus one. We call the result matrix DI. Then the obfuscation of uh, program M is the set of A, which is a uh, concatenation of A0 from GGH50 multilinear map and identity matrix and the set of encoded matrix DI. As I already said, evaluation is uh, the sa almost the same as zero test of GGH15. We just compute a norm of the matrix A product DIs. Indeed, the matrix is the approximately equal to the approximately equal to the zero test of GGH15 and the product of extra blown matrix. We, the product of extra blown matrix is much smaller than Q, so evaluation process preserves the functionality. Now I talk about previous work. First, we record the security definition of I/O. When you have two equivalent programs M and N, and one obfuscated program of one of them called OP, then <clears throat> security of I/O is that no one can determine whether P is M or N in polynomial type. Otherwise. In other words, adversaries want to determine whether P is M or N. Uh, the, obser the observation of uh, analysis of obfuscation is simple. We consider the simple branching programs which always up to zero. M is the set of two zero matrices, and N is the set of one identity matrix and one zero matrix. Then two programs <laughs> both out zero, and we also consider the simplest of falsifications called OP. The simplest means we skip the all randomizing techniques in of two construct for constructing of falsifications. Then we observe evaluation of OP depends on branching programs, M or N. Moreover, Evaluation of OP is a matrix over integers, since all matrices are small. Therefore, all known attacks have been using this algebraic difference over integers. So the recent paper BGMG18 showed that all known zeroizing attacks can construct an algebraic relations between zero test of, result of zero tests and randomized matrix. And BGMG obfuscation removes the algebraic relations by adding the extra blown matrix BI. So we guess algebraic framework it may not be useful anymore. Now I talk about our attacks. Uh, on the outside of algebraic framework, we employ the statistical properties from the same observations the evaluation of branch obfuscated program depends on branching programs M or N. So we can define two random variables X sub I. And we now consider all matrices as uh, random variables. Then we can, we, the two random 
value of xm and xn are well defined, which corresponds to evaluation of m and evaluation, evaluation of n. Like a previous attack, we also observed two distribution. We observed that two distributions may be different because of uh, the new term. The new term may perturbate the uh, distributions. To show this, we need to compute their expectations and variance. The simplest case of statistical generalizing attack is when the expectations of two distributions are different. A uh, green graph is uh, distributions for random variable XM, and red graph is uh, distribution for random variables Xn. Then we can easily find the such a threshold of T. And if evaluation of OP is small than T, then we know P equals N with overwhelming probability. Otherwise, P equals N. However, in our cases, both expectations are zero. So we need to consider another cases. If two variables are Gaussian, and their variances are different, then we also find uh, such a threshold T. And we know when, when evaluation of OP is small, larger than T, then P equals M with overwhelming probability. Unfortunately, in our cases, two random variables are not Gaussian distributions. Actually, it, it, they, are of the, they, are, they are too much complex because of their summations and product of random variables. Moreover, the random variables have the de dependency. So actual attacks requires a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, computations. So we need to... We need to formally analyze it. We borrow some ingredient from the cryptography and statistics. They are sample variances and standard hybrid arguments and heuristic assumptions on product of DIs. The heuristic assumption is verified using the implementation of HHSS. To sum up, our take also start from the same observation that evaluation of two programs, uh, evaluation of obfuscation depends on branching programs. The difference of statistical properties show the weakness IO. As a result, we break the CBW obfuscation for current parameters and, and the algebraic model proposed by BGMG is not enough to construct an idea of obfuscation. The implication of our attack is simple. All statistical properties should be the same regardless of branch programs. Therefore, when you use a permutation branch program, which is the set of all permutation matrices, it is a countermeasure of our attack. Moreover, if you can change parameters, it is also countermeasures. Now I'll talk about further works. The first further works is how to apply statistical zeroizing attacks to other obfuscations based on GJG13 or CRT13. To the best of our knowledge, it seems to be impossible because of their structure <laughs> is, is too different. The next question is how to construct an obfuscation which is probably secure against zeroizing attacks. Moreover, which class of attacks should be considered to construct an obfuscation? Uh, we, need to constru we need to consider at least two types of algebraic zeroizing attacks, algebraic zeroizing attacks and statistical zeroizing attacks. However, we don't know anymore, nothing. The BGM obfuscation for current parameter is still secure against all known attacks. So our last question is, is the BGM obfuscation secure? Yeah, thank you for listening. Yeah. Any questions? Okay, let's thank the speaker again.